Hey gang, it's Brian from FX Billiards. Today we are going to look at two of the most important aspects of running an eight ball rack. One of them being key ball play and the other one being problem solving. So if you watch this channel, you know I talk a lot about eight ball and I talk a lot about solving the problems in an eight ball rack. So we're going to play the low balls and then we're going to play the high balls. And I'm going to show you where your problems are here. First off, we're playing this one right now because we need to tap this three ball out. You may not have noticed, but that three ball was a problem shot. It only went in one pocket, and that was the side that I'm standing on right now. And now we're going to play the two ball, which we passed on an easy shot on the two, to work on that three. A lot of players are not willing to do this. You see that shot on the two at the beginning of the game and you want to shoot it straight in. In the meantime, your three balls on the table at the end of the game. So you have to address your problems early. That's exactly what we're doing here. We're playing the six ball so that we can get on this combination. Now a lot of these shots aren't about patterns. They're not about what shot is easier. They're all about what balls are connected to the problems how do we solve those problems? No, we're not going to shoot that seven ball. It's not connected to the five the way the five is connected to the seven. So we need to go over and back on this shot. And then once we get on the seven ball, our key ball, which is at this point the three, is sitting there waiting for us. We shoot a follow shot on the three ball. We get on the eight. So those of you that don't know, your key ball is the ball that you're going to use to get on the eight ball. You usually make this decision early in the rack, but sometimes the rack changes. If you're playing at a relatively low level, the table changes quite a bit from inning to inning because the balls are being knocked around a lot. If you're playing on a high level, you can pretty much guarantee that the balls aren't going to be changed a lot. They'll start to disappear but the rack will look pretty much the same and makes it actually easier to find a key ball early in the rack when you're playing on a higher level because the table doesn't get shifted around as much. So you can see that three was the only ball that would put us on this eight ball, which is in a very awkward position. And we're going to play the eight in the side. This is not the recommended shot, but we don't have any choice. We don't like to play this eight in that side pocket from that angle if we don't have to. But that's what we had. So if you watch the channel, you know I like to spot those balls and then start over with the second half of the rack. One of the things I don't do is play position on those final shots. So what we're going to do here is break up the cluster. There's our problem shot. Problem solved. But there is another problem on the table. That is the 10 ball. Some of you may think the 10 would be a good key ball. And it's not a terrible key ball. But it is a problem shot where it is right now. And the reason is it only goes in a couple different pockets. So what we're doing here is working our way to the 10. We'll leave the 12 as our key ball shot. And the 15 down table is going to be a shot that we can transition into. Now if we need to, we shoot the 11 ball. But I think that the 15 is a great transition shot or what you would call a key two to get on this 12 ball so that we have an easy shot on the eight. So there we play our pocket hanger just for the purpose of getting us on this ball here. And with this shot, this is key two. That's the ball you're shooting to get on your key ball. The better you get, the more you'll start thinking these things out from the back of the rack moving forward. And here, simple shot on the 12 ball, a little bit of draw, and we should be in good shape for the eight ball. I apologize, guys. I think I could have got straighter on that eight, but you get the point. So I go through these racks pretty quick. So let's shoot it one more time. I'll play it back for you, and we'll talk our way through the rack once again. Okay, let's look at the rack again. I apologize if I repeat myself here, but if I do, it's because it was worth talking about again. So that break could have been better in that, I mean, we spread the balls out 
relatively well, but the cue ball got away from me. I hit a little higher than I wanted to. But as we said, we're going to make decisions based on solving problems here. And we solved that problem with the three ball. Once again, the reason we're breaking out problem shots early is because there's so many balls on the table. If we don't get position, we probably still have a shot. That's your reason for playing problem shots early. So you can see, I took myself down table where all the action was, but I couldn't get on that seven ball, so I had to play the two. I got to play the two because I left it <laughs> where a lot of people might have played it as their first shot. And once again, we're playing all about solving problems here. So you see that 5-4 gets solved just because we played the six ball when we did. Now I'm considering the seven ball here, but when I look at the position I'm going to get on the five, I don't like it at all. So here by playing over and back, we get nice position on the seven ball, which will put us on the three, which is our key ball. We really did not have a lot of choices as far as key balls go. So if we did not solve that problem with the three, we never would have run out. Something very subtle just happened there, which I'm sure just about everybody but myself missed. I was looking at that cluster with the 13 ball, and you might wonder, well, why is he worried about that cluster? Well, <laughs> I'm going to run the second half of the rack, so I'm already examining how I'm going to break up that cluster. Now, one thing I don't do is play position when I make the eight ball at the end, so I kind of have to solve the problem on the fly, but I'm already thinking about it. Anyway, here we're playing the three. Just as planned, we get on the eight in the one pocket that it goes into, and it is a wrap. And people ask me all the time, Brian, how can I'm how come I can get down to five balls and um, I'm on the last two balls and I can't run out? This run out was all based on the first shot of the rack. If I shot the two ball instead of bumping the three ball out, I don't run out at that point. So a lot of times your run out was destroyed your first shot of the game. That's why we do videos about picking the right ball. So here I break up the cluster using the nine ball with a bunch of right hand English. So that's one solved problem. The other problem is the 10 ball, which is sitting next to the eight, which could be not the best, but could be a key ball but there's much better key balls on the table. The 14 would be a great key ball, but I'm gonna shoot it right now. The 12 ball is a good key ball because it really is connected to that eight ball as well. If I had a choice 14 or the 12, I would have taken the 14 as my key ball, but I needed it to get on that 10 ball. So it got disqualified as my key ball. This is very important guys. You see how close I got to the rail? on this 11 ball shot. When you're playing pocket hangers, you wanna get close to the rails because they allow you to just throw a little bit of English on there and get just about anywhere on the table you want to be. So you don't want to be out in space with the cue ball. If you can get close to a rail, that's one of the few instances where being close to the rail works to your benefit. So that allows me to get excellent position. So now, I'm on my key ball, a little bit of draw, and we are just about straight in, guys, on this eight ball. That's the way I like it. So I think that was a pretty good run out. I hope you guys picked up some tips from that. I appreciate are you watching. Here? You guys are the greatest. All of you who subscribe and support the channel, I truly appreciate it. Those of you who haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. It's real good for the channel. So your only price of admission is hitting the subscribe button. Have a great day. Talk to you guys soon.